Welcome, I'm Darren, and I'll be your guide today as I look at the 1980s and 1990s novelty Olympic sets. Because in 1992, Impel made two Olympic sets, and in 1996, Collect the Cards and Upper Deck each made an Olympics card set that were done in the traditional sports card fashion that we're used to, where it's released in packs, and in some cases you can get them in complete set form as well, but they were packs, oftentimes with inserts, they were traditional sports cards for the Olympics. And as far as U.S. Olympics card sets go, for the 20th century, that was pretty much it. We did have a card set we'll be looking at that was released in rack packs, but that was it was not done in a very professional way. That's not to say that there hadn't been Olympics card sets in the past that had been pretty pretty well approached, where for whether it was in 1928 or 32 or 1936 in England or in Germany, there were some really good card sets that were created there where they were oversized wonderful black and white or full color images, whether they're photos or drawings. These card sets were really cool, only they weren't exactly cards because they were sheets of paper, but they were serial numbered, or they were not serial numbered, they were numbered as a card set and they were handled as, as cards as we would understand them today. So those existed and then we also had tobacco card size cards in 28, 1960. We, we had the Brook Bond cards that were released. These cards came in sepia or black and white or full color, but they were all tobacco card size, so they were all much smaller. But none of these were sports cards in the fashion that we are used to. We didn't have that till 1983 and 1984 with the lead up to the 1984 Olympics in LA. And when that was, was being put together, a card set was made called the Greatest Olympians Trading Card Set. These, car, these were the cards that I mentioned were released in rack packs. These were printed like Topps cards. I mean, these are truly 100% Topps cards. Even the design looks like a, a late 1970s, early 1980s Topps card. They're not Topps cards, so they're basically just made by whoever made the cards for Topps. But these cards fit very much into an early to mid 1980s sports card world. These cards have a, a border, like I said, looks like tops. It's got a big white space on the top and the bottom for, you know, for the athlete's name. It has a yellow inner border. It has the, the 1984 U.S. Olympics logo, or 1984 Olympics logo up at the top. Down at the bottom, they have a big flag, which is important. I'll get to that in a second. And then on the card back, they have just a little write-up about the Olympics events that this athlete was was known for, what had happened. There was nothing more to it because there didn't need to be. These are not typically, even though Jerry West had a career, this wasn't about his career. So it's a card of athletes in a, done in a way that we're not usually seeing on sports cards. So it does look a little bit different. But with these cards, like I did mention, there's a US flag on it for a specific reason. In this 99 card set, almost all the athletes are American, but five of them are not. Sonja Henny of Norway is the, the biggest star uh, or biggest name of all of the five different non-American athletes in the set. But, and you have, Nor um, you have Netherlands and Italy that are both featured. And ironically, you have two swimmers, both from Australia, that round out the five international stars of, or international medalists for the, in this Olympic set. Why they selected these five, well, why they selected four of these five athletes, I don't know, because there are a couple of names I could think of to include on here. But this was, this was the only non-US part of this card set. Otherwise, it was a, a straight up American card set with some athletes that are pretty notable. I mean, they had Joe Frazier, they had George Foreman, they had Cassius Clay, who when he was in the Olympics, he was Cassius Clay, later he was Muhammad Ali. So they have these boxers. Obviously in basketball, you saw Jerry West. They also have Oscar Robertson, who were the two biggest names of basketball players up until this point. And I gotta take a moment to acknowledge that it's too bad that these were all famous Olympians. And they didn't include any of the up and coming Olympi Olympians because the 1984 Olympics was when Michael Jordan showed up in his first Olympics. So he could have been in the set if they had bothered to go in that particular route. Obviously they didn't, but it would have been cool. And then the biggest names are Jesse Owens and Jim Thorpe. 
Jesse Owens appears in just about any Olympic set for a very good reason. He's the big middle finger to Das Führer and such a great, me such a great memory of our Olympic tradition. Jim Thorpe is kind of the grandfather of our the U.S. Olympic team, not because he was in the first Olympics. He was in a couple of years or a couple of Olympics into the modern Olympiad, but he was such a such a powerful presence in the Olympics, and his memory has reverberated for decades. Plus, he helped to found the NFL, so he's famous for that. Now, I do find it interesting that of the female athletes in this set, it's not very heavy in big names because you have Dorothy Hamill, you have Babe Didrikson, you have Pat McCormick, and past that, you don't have much in terms of famous female Olympians. It's kind of weird who they selected into this set because there are so many names that you wouldn't see in other Olympics releases in the years, years to come. So there are a lot of names that are either just overlooked or were kind of second tier or maybe just recent Olympians. I don't know why. I don't know how they approach this card set, but it is, um, it's an unusual card set if you've already been collecting these other sets. But while this set, which was released, like I said, in 45 card rack packs, that was the way that it was released. There was another card set released the same year where M&Ms decided to get in on the, on the same party. They decided to make a card set that was released more in the same vein of the Kmart cards and the Toys R Us and Woolworth cards, where this is a 45 card set. It was released in complete set form only. And these cards are basically the same to the tune of these are literally the same cards. The images, okay, so the inner border color is different. Instead of yellow, it's red. All right, there's that. And then up at the top, it says Olympic Heroes. So there's that difference. They took the 84 Olympics logo off the top and they put it down at the bottom with the M&M's logo, replacing the flag. And on the back, the card back is a different color. That's the only difference between these cards. The numbers are different, but the write-up is exactly the same. The photos are the same. It's just a miniature set. It's a little less than half the size of the other set. So they just got rid of a little over half of the athletes. There's only one exception to that. There's one card that's different because in the first set, Donna De Verona, her card, they messed up. They put the wrong image on it. Otherwise, the card is correct, but they have the wrong image, so it's a UER. So when they made the M&M set, well, they corrected the image and they also changed the text so that her name reads a lot better. That's it. That's the only change. On the back, everything's the same. So this is otherwise, all these cards are identical. So these two card sets leading up to the 84 Olympics were our first time getting U.S. card sets for the Olympics that are in the, the traditional fashion that we're used to, except for the fact that they weren't released in the typical 15 card pack format that we would that we were used to with just about everything else. So they were still treated more as novelty sets. And we wouldn't get another set like this until 1992. And in 92, that's when Impel released their card sets, the U.S. Olympic Hall of Famers, and then they also did the Future Heroes cards, those two sets. Well, in that same year, Classic decided to jump in and get involved because Classic was trying to figure out its place. It wanted to become a part of the sports card world and not just be cornered in the, the, the gar card game that they made for baseball. So instead, they were starting to get into minor leagues and into college cards. That was kind of the area that they were starting to carve out, but they also decided to take, the, take advantage of the, of the up and coming Olympics and make a set called World Class Athletes. This is a 60 card set that was released in blister pack form. So more like the baseball cards they've been doing, these were not released in packs. Although they do have randomly inserted cards in these complete sets that are autographed. But otherwise it's just a straightforward 60 card set and the set is done in a bit of an untethered way, kind of the way that Classic was where they were still trying to figure out exactly who and what they were. The cards have a simple black border with one side that's a little bit bigger so they can have the white text saying world-class athletes and then everything else is just the image. Classic logo in there. But if you look really closely in the image, you might find that there's gold text that says the athlete's name. I would not advise you trying to read it on the front because you're not going to. 
Instead, you need to look on the back and, okay, it's easier to read on the back, but still, this is not a well-designed card. The text on the back is just good luck. I wish you the best because it's, it's, a, it's an ambitious card design. It looks like it has all the things it needs to be good. It's just not well-crafted. But like I said, it is a card set that's built around the Olympics, which makes it weird to be looking at a Desmond Howard card. But the thing is that Classic wanted to get a couple of athletes in there to tie into their college athletes cards that they were making. So Desmond Howard, they got the contract, uh, contract to make a card of him. You also had Rahib Ishmael, you had Deion Sanders, and you had Jim Abbott. And that's as close as we got to any of the three of the traditional sports. Three of the four because they did have cards of John Stockton, Larry Bird, Charles Barkley, Scotty Pippen. Names that might sound familiar to you because, well, they're dream teamers. And yes, they got, they made a bunch of cards of dream teamers in their NBA logo or NBA jerseys that are all airbrushed like we had seen with Abbott and Deion Sanders. These cards are not, this is not the entire dream team. So Jordan's not there, Magic's not there. I don't think David Robinson's there. It's part of the set or part of the team, but they had a couple of the NBA players in here and Jim Abbott was also an Olympian, so he, he fit into that. They also included two female basketball players, you know, Jennifer Azee and Teresa Edwards. So they were also included here in this card set. But apart from that, everybody else is a non-traditional, non, they're not from one of the four main sports. So you got Pete Sampras and Jennifer Capriati. And interestingly for Pete Sampras, this uh, I think would technically count as his rookie card. This is right at the beginning of his career, so he might have had a Sports Illustrated Kids card at this point, but that would, that would be about it. Speaking of which, this card set is most like the Sports Illustrated Kids card set because it just runs the gamut. It's all over the place. They have some really good track and field stars. So they have Florence Griffith Joyner, Jackie Joyner Kersey, and Michael Johnson, which is about the biggest headlining group the biggest headlining trio that you're going to find of Olympic track and field stars at one time. So that's a, that's really kind of the big headlining space of this card set. They also have uh, Oscar de la Hoya, which makes sense. And then Muhammad Ali, which doesn't make sense because he wasn't a current athlete. He was from, from the past and he is one of the few members of this uh, few athletes in this entire set that's from the past. Speaking of which, in gymnastics, we have Nadia Comaneci, who is the only non-US athlete in this card set, and also uh, an Olympian from the, la from the past. But what's really weird is they have Bella Caroli in this set. And, I mean, he's a coach, legendary coach, could do no wrong at the time. Apart from that, you get kind of the typical Olympians kind of things where you have swimmers, you have volleyball players you got you know athletes like that so that's kind of that's the way that the whole set fills out and so it's a card set that is very lacking in distinct design because they want to focus on the image but there's also not a structure to the set it is a it's a very unique set and one we would not see we really wouldn't see anything like this again probably for the best but it's an interesting card set the classic made in 1992. and then they did a couple of cards of dan and dave Dan O'Brien and Dave Johnson were the two, they were the two big decathlon heavyweights, and it was expected that they were going to be competing for the gold. And unfortunately, that's not quite how it worked out, but they have individual cards for each of the two athletes, and then they have one card that's a combination of the two. Speaking of which, at the end of the card set, they also have some additional cards of some of the athletes. So the main cards and the secondary cards look the same on the front. There's nothing about the cards that are different. On the back, however, the main cards have a bunch of text and they have a portrait of the athlete. And then the other card just doesn't have any of that. They just have a simple quote buried in the middle of the card. Not sure what the concept was, but there are a couple of cards that are basically like subset cards. They're additional cards to, to the rest of the set. So those three sets were the full size card sets that were released. 45 cards, 60 cards, 99 cards. Some smaller card sets were created as well that were done as promotional. Um, well, almost all of them were done as promotional gimmicks. 
Prior to the 1988 Olympics, Leaf Candy Company made a small card set of Special Olympics cards. Technically, this doesn't fit into my video, but I wanted to, to acknowledge it because Olympics is in the name, so you may run into these from time to time, but understand, these are just drawings of kids for the Special Olympics. That is what it's focused on, so you're not going to see like a Jesse Owens card show up in there. That's, that's not what the set's about. But prior to 1992, they did have the they did have two sets that were created as promotional sets, one by 3M. Now 3M created a five card set where the front card is just a frontispiece. It's a basically it's an image checklist of the four athletes. Each one of the athletes has a sepia shot that's kind of buried in the card, difficult to read, card stock's not very good. On the back it has a write-up, not much to this card set. Also, Snickers decided to get involved, and you know we'd had an M and M set four year or eight years before, so now it's time for Snickers. But when Snickers got involved, they really took their time and made sure that a great card set was made. The frontispiece is a wonderful header card, but this card is also a checklist. So on the front, it's advertising who the card set is related to. On the back, it has all eleven of the athletes in the card, so a twelve card set well built for it to be thought of as a complete set but oh my word these cards are amazing i mean these are really impressive high-end cards for 1992. they may not be high gloss or gloss at all that doesn't matter they're still more impressive than just about any other cards in the year they have a metallic gold finish that fades down to white for the border Inside, they have a really good red, white, and blue array of information in there. All the colors are very rich. The images are really impressive. If not the best printed, this is a well-crafted card. And they have some big name athletes as well, because obviously they have Michael Johnson. They also have Jackie Joyner Kersey. They have Bruce Jenner. They have Jesse Owens. So, you know, it's, it's a pretty good collection of athletes that are here in this card set but really, really cool, cool card set for 1992. And then in 1996, Kodak decided to get involved as well. And they made a card set that was actually done in four different groups. Each one of these groups has a header, not a card, it's a piece of paper that says set one, set two, set three, set four. That's just the way that the different portions of the set were released. There's no relationship to them because I mean, the cards don't even have card numbers on them. But each one of these cards has a bold yellow border with a film strip theme down the middle, which is well crafted, does a great job of showcasing the image inside. On the back, it actually shows the medal count on each, for each one of these athletes, which is really cool. And I love that at the top of the card, they, sh they, they make a big deal about which Olympics the athlete is really well known for. Obviously, Nadia Comaneci is again in this card set. You also have Florence Griffith Joyner, you have Jim Thorpe, you have Babe Dittrickson, you have Jesse Owens. You, you have a really good collection of play, of athletes from past Olympics here again with this 1990 cards, 1996 card set. And that is the end of all of these specialty card sets for the, for the Olympics proper. But I wanted to tack on one extra thing that's just kind of fun about 1996 because Upper Deck made a card set in conjunction with Looney Tunes, or for Looney Tunes, where these are kind of like the famous Goofy on Sports cartoons that Disney made, the, the shorts where Goofy is, he's exploring, he's explaining different sports, or it, it is being explained and he is the example. And there's one on the Olympics that is just amazing that if you haven't seen, you gotta check it out. But they decided to do something similar in single image form with the Looney Tunes characters. So they're showing off different Olympic sports, whether it's current Olympics or classic Olympics. And it's a fun little card set that was really fits more with comic ball, but I didn't want to put it with comic ball. That was already 32 minutes long. So I wanted to toss it into here to say, this is also an Olympic card set that is really kind of special and it was made by upper deck. So it's, it's pretty prominent. That, however, brings all of this to a close. These are the essentially the other card sets for the U.S. Olympics in the 80s and the 90s. And there are, I didn't want to get into the basketball teams. I've already done those cards, or videos about those cards. 
I also didn't want to get into the into the hockey cards. I want, want to look at the hockey team cards when I get around to the Winter Olympics. So that's going to be separate. And I didn't want to get into international sets. So like Canadian sets and stuff, there's a lot of that that's out here as well. In fact, the Canadians seem to like making sports cards for their team better than we did. I, I don't know why, but that's a whole nother story. This is what I wanted to look at with these sets that you might see popping up. It gives you an understanding of you know where they were and how all that aligned. So thank you very much for watching. If you're curious about any of the other Olympic sets, I've already done three other videos for the Olympics proper with the, the other four sets I already mentioned. Likewise, all of the US basketball team sets. I've done videos for all those, so you can definitely check those out. And other than that, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And thank you very much for watching.